So I'm going to show you a little bit of my painting process today. So now I have my dried acrylic underpainting, um, which I explained in a previous video, and I'm ready now to go in with oil. I generally work from back to front, so I'm going to begin with my wall, um, maybe the artwork on the wall, the pillows, um, then sort of the fabric in front, and the very last thing I'm going to refine is Isabel here in the center. Um, because if I work from back to front, my paint sort of overlaps in the natural way that space is overlapping. So when I'm painting Isabel's fur, the blankets and pillows and things around her will already be painted. So when I have the little pieces, you know, of her fur that sort of um, come out from her body and overlap those blankets and pillows, they lay on top of that or in front, you know, as, as they would in real space. So I'm going to begin with the, the wall, and I've pre-mixed some, some paint for that. So I created this sort of neutral color for the wall by mixing yellow and purple and white. Uh, and then I have a little bit of blue here, because in my image I see the wall gets a little bluer over on this side, because I actually have a window over here, so it's getting the blue from the, um, from the light from the window. So I have a little more yellow, purple, blue, and white on my palette, as well as I have some of these neutrals already mixed with the yellow, purple, and white. I'm starting with a relatively large brush. Uh, this is a Utrecht 10 uh, bristle brush. So it's a stiffer brush. So I'm gonna start with some relatively thin layers of paint, and I have pre-mixed some of my Walnut Alkyd Medium into my paint. So right now I'm just applying this very thin layer of this cream onto the wall and I'm changing the direction of my brush strokes to kind of conform around um, the various edges and, and objects. I like a lot of brushwork in my, in my final paintings. Okay, so I think some areas of that need to be a little more gray, so I'm going to add a little bit of purple to this color because um, it's still a little yellow. So purple is the complement of yellow and it's going to uh, begin canceling that out. That's better. And I have a little bit of my Alkyd Medium over here on my, uh, over here on my table that's just off camera, so I'm occasionally going over and picking up some of that medium. Okay, then I'm going to mix a tiny bit of blue in with this color and bring in a little bit of this blue that's over on the right. And then I notice around the edge of the pillows against the wall, there's a tiny bit of shadow. So I'm going to go back into that original color again with more purple, because purple is going to gray out and darken that yellow beige. And then I think I want it a hair brighter in here. So I'm going to lighten that original color with some white. And I pre-mix that. I never go in with pure white directly on my painting, um, especially that titanium white. It's very opaque, it's very thick, um, and it doesn't look consistent with the rest of the painting if I don't pre-mix it first. Okay, I think I'm going to let that be. It needs a little bit of time to set or dry. It has the alkyd medium in it. It should dry fairly quickly, uh, but it might be later today or tomorrow before I touch that again. So I'm now going to move into some of the fabric. So before I move into the fabric, I do want to show you some close-ups of uh, the wall that we just painted. 
So you can see how thin the paint is. You can see the different directions in the brush stroke. Um, and you can see how some of that purple from the toned ground still peeks through um, just a little, just a little bit. So the bed sheets in here are a little more peach than the wall. So I added a little bit of red to create a little more orange of a, of a hue to start out the sheets. And I'm still working with a stiff bristle brush, but I've moved to a uh, thinner, a smaller flat. And I've mixed a few variations of this. So I have a more gray purple. I have a sort of grayed out version of the, of the orange, the light orange, and I have a deeper gold version over here. Now my shadows are going to need to be much more drastic and contrasty than this uh, by the end. But right now it's helping me just put in a little bit of uh, the suggestion of those shadows. That way I know where they are as I go back in and refine it later. And now I have a little bit of a deeper peach to go into um, this crumpled piece that Isabel is laying on. Now before I mix the green for the shirt, the sort of olive green shirt that's lying here in a pile on the bed, I wanted to give you another close up to see just the, the subtle ways that I'm starting to map in the folds of the fabric. So if we look down here in the light colored fabric, you can start to see the, the subtle um, shadows from the folds and wrinkles um, that are gonna get much more defined with uh, subsequent layers. So I've pre-mixed a couple of greens here as well. So I have a lighter and a darker. Again, the contrast isn't as much as it's going to need to be by the end, but it's gonna help me map out the folds of this fabric. Um, I'm just working with the colors that are already on my palette um, because I have a fairly small palette. So when I go back in in another layer, um, I'll be able to get the contrast and the colors a little more accurate using whatever appropriate color I, I need at that time.
So now that I've blocked in a little bit more of the fabric and the light and shadow, I'll give you another close up. Now I'm just gonna block out some of the highlights on, um, on Isabel. And I've made a really light uh, purple gray for that. So I see her fluffy tail is quite light. A little too much paint on my brush. There we go. And I'm starting to lose her tail against the fabric without those shadows. I'm just going to kind of put some purple in there to represent those shadows for now. So if too much dark on my brush, I'll just wipe that off. I'm still not happy with how much that tail sort of blends in there, so I'm just going to wipe a bit of that away. There we go. And while I'm going in and wiping here, I have a few areas in this green that I think are a little too thick for my first layer, so I'm just going to wipe a few of those down a bit. So at this point, and with the paint that I had on my palette, I think I'm ready to let this sit for a little bit and come back to it in another session. I want to use some earth tones in Isabel and in some of my shadow areas, and I didn't have any earth tones out of my palette for this session, so that is where I will most likely start uh, next time. And I will continue this in another video.